Rogers and turn it over to Sister Rose. Let's give her a hearty amen as she comes. We're so happy for all of you that are here. Praise God for the victory, for being an overcomer. Yes. No matter what's going on, we're overcomers. Thank God. Thank God. So I appreciate the Lord and all that he has done and for bringing us to this place. He didn't have to do it. You know, you didn't have to be blessed. You were blessed because he cared. He loved you enough. I thank him for, for all that he's done. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to <coughs> the 39th chapter of Genesis. Father, we're so grateful tonight for your blessings, for all that you've done for us. It's such a privilege to be in your house. We thank you because we can feel your presence. We thank you because you never, never leave us alone. We thank you because you are there even when sometimes we don't know it. I thank you because you loved us enough to be willing to give your life. I pray for every person in this building that you would touch their hearts and their lives as only you can. I pray for the anointing upon thy servant, for without you I can do nothing. And we'll give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yes. 39th chapter of Genesis says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, in, 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 an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Jumping down to the sixth verse. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught. He had saved the bread which he did eat, and Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master, what is not what is with me in the house? He hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? It came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to, lay, to lie by her or to be with her. It came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house uh, to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. I want to preach a little while tonight. <clears throat> you can't get promoted without going through something. Now, you got to understand all the things that Joseph went through prior to this time. And going through so many different things and being rejected and treated bad and, and, and people envied him and didn't love him and all those things. But I thought he, he continually to progress. The scripture says he progressed because God was with him in spite of everything that he went through. So good to see you back, sweetie. I'm glad you're here. And so you got you to understand that Everybody likes to be promoted to something. People love positions, many times all for the wrong reason. I want this position. I want to be in this place. I want to be there. And sometimes the things they want to be, they can't even handle it if they were there. But I got to thinking about this week and thinking, you know what? I was so content sitting on the church pew. I never desired anything that I am today except more of God. But to hold a specific position never was important to me. And I found out that most people that really want position is the people usually don't qualify for it and wouldn't do right if they had it. So as I look at Joseph and all the things he went through with his brothers and all this stuff, and, and then he continued to be blessed as he grew. Now, they thought more or less they got rid of him, dumped him out there, sold him into Egypt and all these things, but God was there to promote him. You cannot have wear the crown of promotion without having the cross of suffering. You have to suffer. 
There's things you got to go through. No matter whether you want to go through it or not, if you ever go to mount to anything, you're going to have to go through something. It's impossible. You know, in school, everybody looks forward to being promoted to the next grade, even if you don't have a clue what the next grade is about and didn't know what was in this one. But everybody wants to be promoted. But the when I thought about that, I thought, God, what is it with man that he is so desperate of being in a position of power? Why do you want that? Because number one, position comes responsibility. It comes some type of price. We just don't wake up one day and go here. It takes time to get there. And when you try to do it on your, on your own, you don't make it too good. Joseph wasn't looking for anything. God blessed this man. When, when Pharaoh had a dream, he called in his magicians and everybody else to, so he could get the meaning of it. And nobody could do it but Joseph. And what I liked about it was that he wasn't looking for a position because when he, when he interpreted the dream, then he says to the king, pick you out a man. Somebody who can set all this stuff, all this stuff in order. Because there's going to be some good days, there's going to be some bad days. Some days of famine and some days of plenty. Pick you out a man. He didn't go there and say, you know, king, I'm the man. I mean, if you're looking, looking for somebody to do it, pick me. Most people that want to be picked should never be picked. Because I've never seen it fail. Every person that God called to do a work for the kingdom never felt like they was worthy of it. They always, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to get here and say, Lord, why me? I mean, I come from such a little bitty tribe. God said, I'm looking for little bitty people. I'm not looking for people who think they know how to do everything. I'm looking for people that, that will listen to me and I can teach them. That's what he said. That's what I want to do. I want to teach you what's right. And I want to, I want to gradually move you up. Watch this. Anything you see that grow too fast is never of God. It's never of God. Because the process that gets us there, we got to take time to get there. And there is some teaching that, and things that you got to learn about different things that you don't know that you think that you know. A lot of people think they already know it. But there's some things you don't know. And God said, I'm going to take you through here and take you through that and put you through this and put you through that. I had my family laughing this morning when I said, just as I was getting ready to get in the tub, I'm going to preach this next Sunday. Because I thought the Lord, I said, wow. He said to me, you need to glory in your infirmities. I said, hello? <laughs> glory. I told my kids, I said, look that word up. Uh, all these things you're supposed to be doing, happy, basking in it, enjoying it, pleasure. Everything I think. So, what are you saying, God? Glory in it because you don't plan to come right now? And I thought about that this morning. I kept and I was telling my family about it. I said, this God is amazing. I mean, you wait for him to speak. You wait for him to do something. And he will speak, but it ain't necessarily what you was expecting. Now, I'd love to hear that I'm coming to you on, on, uh, uh, on the tenth day of next month. Paul gloried in his Infirmities. He said because that the power of God might rest upon him. When I thought about that, I thought, well, God, all that you've done for me, all the places that you've taken me, the things that have happened to me, thank you for that. I probably have had a better day since I've been uh, putting out a little glory. <laughs> things are not as bad as, as it was. And I said to the Lord, I said, I, Lord, I didn't glory in it. I complained about it. Which was true. But I thought today, I thought, no matter what's going on, you may not understand everything that God's putting you through. But you know what? If you go through it, you're going to be better. Right. You're going to be stronger. That's what I was telling my kids last night as I was talking to them. I said, even though we've been through a lot, but there's so many people that's been touched by this situation. I mean, my family, church people, wives, and all these people have been touched by this thing. And God has created something greater and something better in all of us. We're not the same. And I said, God, and when I look at this situation and say, thank you for all that you've done for keeping us safe, for keeping us in our right mind, for helping us 
to go forward in spite of? Oh, we are blessed. We are blessed. But I, I thought to myself, well, you know what? If you really want to have a spiritual promotion, and he does give them, but they ain't passed around like, Jack, like Cracker Jacks. There is a price to be paid. And I thought to myself when I first got saved and I looked at one knee, I thought, I want to be like you. And I, I thought, but I didn't have any idea what I was thinking, what I was asking for. And, but once you get in the role, I never regret it that I asked God to bless me, to anoint me, to bring me to a place of a great relationship with him. I never, not one time, regret that. But by the same token, I wasn't expecting what I went through. That there's going to be some tough times, Rose. You're going to suffer some things. You're going to go through some things. You better prepare yourself. And 50 years later, I am still here. I am still here because I was willing to let God do whatever needs to be done in me that I might be what he wanted me to be. You think you're well made. You ain't well made. When you get saved, you just started, baby. And some of these folks been sitting on the pew forever, and they still ain't, ain't got nowhere. They still can point to the same old stuff that's always been in them. It's still there today. You know, somewhere in your life, some of this stuff ain't supposed to show up no more. And it's still showing up. I'm glad the old rose don't, ain't hanging around. You have to kill her. You have to destroy her. And she doesn't want to be destroyed. She'll fight back. She'll kick at you. She'll try her best not to give in. But if you want to go with God, you're going to say, yes, Lord. Promotion with God is about yes. What do you want me to do? And then don't say, well, if it's going to take all that, man, well, maybe God better find him somebody else. He don't just have to have you. So while you don't care if he feeds you or somebody else, hey, I, if God can do anything with this, hey, I want him to. With all the pain, with all the suffering, with all the things that you go through, I wouldn't trade it for today because God is so good. He knows what to do. He knows how to exalt us. He looked at Joseph. Now, when God saw Joseph, he knew what he was going to do with him. He knew. But you got to go first to the pit. You're going to be hated. Your brothers are going to put you in a pit. And then they're going to take you out. They're going to sell you and get rid of you. And send you into a place where you don't know anybody. And then go back and tell your dad that, you know, he, uh, a wild animal got him because they were jealous of him. So think about it today. You can look at anybody you want to look at and say, if I just could be the way you are, you better find out first where, where, where have they been? What have they gone through? What are they still going through? Because you're going to suffer until you die. There's not going to be where, you know, okay, it's all over. No, you may not have the same trial, but you're going to suffer something. It's a part of serving God. <clears throat> I said to the Lord this evening when I got out of bed, I said, well, glory be to God. Glory be to God. And you know what? The scripture says in all things, let us give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. This is God's will for your life. Say thank you. You mean thank him in the pain? Yes. Thank you when you feel like you can't make it? Yes. Thank you when you know God has the power to take it away? Say yes to him. Say yes. I am convinced that without a doubt that your life gets better through suffering. People that never go through a trial, people that never suffer, they don't really have a relationship. Because you can have a relationship with God without suffering, partaking of his suffering. Paul says that I might know him in the power of his resurrection, but also in the fellowship of his suffering. Now, I don't just want a part of the resurrection. That's the glory part. But now can I, can I go through the suffering that he went through? How important that is. How important it is. It's so when I'm looking at Joseph, Joseph was a, a person that God worked through and he yielded to him. Some of these people that want God to use them, well, he got to break you with an axe. 
knock your head off, break your back, put you down. Because some people, they're just not going to give in to God no matter what. They're still looking for a way to get through, get by as easy as I can. But he said, if you suffer in the flesh, you have ceased from sin. So it's a part of our lives. And I guess sometimes we look at the thing and say, oh, yeah, it's a part of our lives, but do we have to stay in it for the rest of our life? Yeah. You may have a, a tiny, tiny, tiny little, but don't expect anything to just be going great the way you want it to go all the time. Not going to happen. You learn through, through the trials and the pain that you suffer. You learn how to go through it in spite of what's going on in your life. And let me tell you, any person that is suffering physically or whichever way, they are going through something for something else that God is doing. We don't understand it. We don't know. But we know for sure there's a reason for this. And I want you to still move. I still want you to do your job no matter what. And I don't care if both legs are broke. Continue to preach. You lose your tongue. Continue to preach. Because I need somebody who's going to say, for God I live, for God I die. I'm not in this thing temporarily. I came to this thing because I was determined I was going to finish it. And at the end of the day, I'm going to spend eternity with him. Yes, without a doubt. So when I look at people, I'm thinking, yeah, do you really want uh, uh, to be, be like this person or that person or this thing? You better know what you're asking for. That's what Jesus did when, when, uh, when the woman came to him and said, and said Lord, I want to know if you'll let, one, uh, you know, I got two sons here. Could you put one on your left and one on your right? He said, can you drink of this cup? Can, can you drink of what's in here? So you're asking for this without any knowledge of what you got to do. So I, I, I feel a sense of encouragement. Though the Lord did not say to me, Oh, Rose, don't worry. Everything's going to be great. I'm going, to, I'm going to get you this morning. No. And you get up, you go to bed every night, and you get up, and you say to the Lord, you go to bed, hopefully tomorrow is my day to only find that not yet. Not yet. Maybe God some kind of way through all of this that I don't see clear. For we look through a glass darkly. But then one day face to face. I can't see all of this. But I know one thing. You don't never do nothing wrong. And when, and when Job couldn't see it. He said he knows the way that I take. And after he finished with me. Then shall I come forth as gold. When he is done with me. Not until then. Some of y'all walking around here. You ain't even done yet. God ain't even begin to start to work in you yet. And you around here talking about, you know, I'd just be so happy. If that, you know, God just do this for me, I'd be so happy. And, and he said, I got some places to take you first. I'm about to put you on the wheel. I got to put you in a place where, where you're going to have to feel some pain. Put you in the fire. Put you in the fire. I heard Demetrius said, the Lord said, I'm going to pulverize you. I said, you ain't got a clue what that means. You ain't got a clue. Pulverize you? That's bad. When the Lord said to me in Washington, I'm going to tear you down and make you over again. Now, I had been saved a little while, filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and he said, I got to tear you down and make you over again. I thought, okay. Okay, that's okay. I had no idea. What tearing down meant. I mean, he put me through. I was alone by myself trying to figure out how I get through this. And there's nobody I can talk to but God. Nobody else. I'm never going to forget that day that the thing between me and Juanita was severed. 
That was the scariest, most darkest hour of my life. I'm going to tear you down and make you over, and I'm going to put you all by yourself in a town that believes in her, and you don't have family or friend here, but I'm going to put you through it, and you're going to walk through it, and you're going to come out better. At that moment, you don't see better. You see pain. You see hurt. You see, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Who can I talk to? And you're going to talk to me. That's what I had to do. I, I am glad that day happened. But at the beginning, wow, it was scary. Because this is a woman I confided in just about on everything. And talk to her. And she taught me the ways of God. How in the world do I get a person who brought me here to suddenly turn on me and become jealous of me and envious of me and, and fight me? I couldn't believe it. I thought, wow, this is, this is crazy. But I went through it. It was hard. I cried for at least four years with the breakup. Oh, we communicated in the spirit. She wanted me uh, to do something. She said, Lord, tell this to Rose. And I called. She said, you got the message? I said, yeah. We communicated. It was, no other relationship has ever been like that. Neither do I want one. It was good while it lasted, but the pain I felt to sever it wasn't a good, wasn't a good thing. It was good, but didn't feel good. So I think that if you want to go to another spiritual place, do you know what you got to go through? And you're not going there because you say, Lord, take me higher. Uh, yeah. Lord, just take me higher. I just want to go higher. Higher, Lord. Yeah, but you ain't ready. You're not ready. You only think you are. I think about all the things, but I look back and wow, wow, wow. So many things, so many painful things. So many times of walking alone with nobody there with you. Nobody to talk to but him. It's amazing. Went through it anyway. And every time that thing was over, I was better because of it. And that's what I was saying to my kids. I said, there's not a person in this family that's not going to be better at the end. Because there's some things had to be changed. There was some shakeups had to be done. That, that's why Job said he picked me up and shook me to pieces. And then I'm going to fit you back together and you're going to be better than ever. Right. Nobody can do it for you but God. Quit running for position. Looking for, I wish I was there. I wish I was, I wish I was the pastor. I wish I was the assistant pastor. You are stone nuts. You're stone nuts. I would never have looked for this for me. No way. Number one, I couldn't talk to more than two people at a time at the most, and that was a lot. I would have never chosen this. But the fact that he chose me, I am thankful for that. Because the experience I have had with him, there's none else like it. I said to my kids, I said, I just want to get my spiritual life in better shape. And they looked at me and bust out laughing. I thought, I don't care if you laugh. I just want to do more. I want to be better, stronger, everything more. And so they're looking at, okay, mama, where are you at? Why? You know, you want more? Yeah, I want more. Yeah. I never get enough. Because I understand when the Apostle Paul said, oh, I tasted of him. He said, but then I had this longing. I wanted more. Give me more of this. My life has been a good life in spite of the pain, in spite of the disappointments, in spite of all the things that we've gone through. Uh, my life has been a good life. And I look back at our life as a family and I see it. Everything was shaken. Everything was shaken. All the kids were shaken. God just started uncovering things and rattling, undoing things. And, and, and boy, did, have we had some pain as a result. But it's well worth it. And sometimes I have to say, it's okay. It's okay. We'll get through it all. And I, you don't sit around and complain about, I think about what the scripture said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. He has come into my life and the life of my family like a flood. It's, in the, it's on the left, it's on the right, it's behind us, it's in front of us, it's everywhere. All this is going on. 
But we're being made into something new, changing us into another place of glory. And you can't go there without paying the price. Everybody wants to ride. Nobody wants to pay the fare. You got to be willing to pay the fare. That you're able to, that God brings you to a place where you're able to stay solid. You don't fall apart. You don't go through a bunch of uh, 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 temper tantrums. And I don't know why you have to just let it go. You ain't going to never know why everything. But one thing it does for you when you go through the fire is that you're willing to accept whatever's going on, though I don't understand it. I don't see it. It's not clear. For we look through a glass darkly. I understand that. I, but then when I see him, I shall see him as he is. But right now, we're not getting it. It's too, it's somewhat cloudy. But God has done something great. Every time I talk to those men, I think, wow. But then I talk to them again, and I see some old stuff, and I think, hey, after all this time, come on. Come on. And what it tells me no matter how much God puts man through the process, every stage he takes you through, you still see a, a little piece of that little, that little piece that shouldn't be there still just showing up. What's that showing up for? Why is that? You got to slap your back in there. Get, get down. Because you see this little bitty piece that should have been dead already is still showing up. And every time we say, Lord, it's enough. It's enough. It's, uh, no, look at this little piece. I'm finishing it. I told the Lord one day, I said, Lord, you can't finish the work on the outside. I mean, since you're God, you ain't limited to just inside. So why don't you just bring them on out and finish? Oh, when they come out, they will never be the same. You'll never be the same. And we won't. We won't. And so we got to look up and say, thank God. Because he is in the process of making us. Doing in us what? Couldn't be done no other way but the fact that he takes me there. My kids often remind me of things that the Lord said that some I remember, some of them is kind of vague. And, and I thought about the time when the Lord in prayer, I was praying as we were still on Patrician Way. And, and the Lord, uh, an angel came and got me while I was in prayer. And took me away. And when I got there, he instructed me I had to go through this and look at this particular thing, and I did. But when I got there, I wondered what it was. Because all in that place it was real, real, real soft. And I looked down and wondered how could you stand solidly at, in this place because it is so soft. And all over me, it's like these big billows of soft, softness like you cannot explain. And I thought, where am I at? And where I was? In the heart of God. And I heard this voice say to me, not many people come here. He said, Moses has been here. Paul has been here. There was one other one. They've been here, only people I can trust. I was standing there thinking, wow. And I'm looking at all this, and when I, when I understood that it was actually in the heart of God, the chambers of his heart, and the softness was unbelievable. So then I understood in the scripture when he said, oh, even the part of God that's soft, it's, you cannot comprehend it because it's softness as you don't know. And that he could easily be swayed because of that love and that compassion. And then he looked at me and he said, Rose, if you ask me in this place to release Charles, I would have to release him. In this place, I cannot say no. And I looked. I never saw him, just hear him. In this place, the shrine could not hold him. I thought, and I answered back and I said, I would never ask you to do that. In that place, this feeling of caring and loving and, oh my God, this is, 
I could never ask that of you because when I sense the softness in this place and you're so great, and how in the world did you get this soft toward me? How in the world? I remember just looking around, startled, puzzled at what I saw in a voice that I heard. And I had to answer, I could never ask that of you. That's, this is the only place you can change my will. This is the only place. So I understand why everybody don't go there because somebody's going to take advantage of that softness. Somebody's going to say, well, get him out, God, get him out. No, no, I would not do that to you because I'm not going to take advantage of your love, of your caring. I'm not going to do that. And when I finally got back, I was still on my knees in prayer, and I, I got up, and I was so baffled by what I saw. And, whoa, this is, this is over the top. I've had unbelievable experiences during this 50 years of walking with God, and you don't get it without suffering. No, not just anybody goes there. Thank you. And most of all, thank you for saying that you trust me. That means everything. You trusted me enough to bring me into a place where few people have ever seen or gone to. Thank you. For who am I but the dust of the earth? Who am I that you would do such a thing? Not without suffering. Fast after fast after fast after fast. Prayer, more prayer. Prayer, more prayer. And I look at people think, you don't pray enough. That's why you don't know. Mary, I am so happy for you. Yeah. I mean, when you are speaking, God is speaking. Yeah. And I look at the wow, this is awesome. Because you're not the person that I thought would get to this place. Yeah. And then I hear you. I hear that ring. Wow, that's God, that's God. And when you keep on saying that, that's God. And when they said one night y'all was getting ready to watch a movie or something and, and you just felt this need to pray and, and I thought, he's moving you. Don't stop it. Keep it going. Somebody else will be looking at you and say, what's, what's wrong, baby? Nothing. I'm, I'm somewhere out here. I feel him confirming it. The half ain't been told. But that's so, when you see that in ministry as a pastor and you see that, that is so encouraging. It's such a blessing to see a person that came this way, but look at them now. It's amazing. You're not just talking. You hear God. You're thinking, whoa. While others sitting, not really concerned. They just hope they get in the, in, in the gate. They hope they do. And they don't really give themselves to God. They don't think extras is important. It all is important. It's all important. So by the time you get here, this, this, this is cruising here. You're cruising. Nothing, nothing, nothing can pluck you out of his hand. You're not getting ready to fall at this stage. The only way you fall at this stage is that you just give up. Because I'm telling you, you're in a place that's so good, so strong, so solid. And the storm comes, the wind blow, all these things. Thank God. And while she was testifying, I could see on the monitor, her little girl looking up at her like this. She don't understand it, but wow, mama. Let it get you to her. So she can become this. If I could somehow get people to understand if the Lord wants somebody, are you one that, you, that he can use? Probably not. And probably don't want to. I really don't want it. Somebody told me one time, I don't want, I don't want to be there. If I have to go through what you went through, I wouldn't want to go there. I thought, well, go ahead to hell then. I'm glad I'm here. It's not always easy. And when I say always easy, not for the trip itself, but all the things that come as a result of this. 
because I'm continually making you. I'm continually molding you. I'm continually shining you up, polishing you up for the kingdom. This is a great life. Anybody that don't want it, something is wrong with them. See, David said, Lord, I want to build you a house because never has there been a place where you can put your name. And David was a man after God's own heart. I was talking to uh, Howard the other day, and he said, Sister Rose, what, what do you think of Psalm? I said, David was one of the most... Uh, greatest people when it came to praise and worship he knew how to worship God he knew how to praise him and I thought oh if you could get people to praise God what would happen to them everything can change in a moment of praise if I could just praise him look up look up now I'm telling you in this walk sometimes you're walking, you're going through some of the most difficult times. God talks the less. So you got anything to say today? No. Nothing's being said. You just got to walk this. And I want you to trust me. Know that I'm here. You may, not hear, uh, you may not hear my voice, but hold on to me. I'm here. I told you I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. So you know I'm here. Even when it feels like He's a million miles away. He's not. He's not. See? God wants to do something in his people and exalt you to a place of spirituality. And as Reverend Gullet said at home, he'll put you in a place where he'll hide you from the devil. I believe that. I truly believe that. That when he wants to really just knock your head off, he just, he just can't do it. You're in a different place. My grandmother said that she, she prayed and saw God so much until she, it was like she was elevated, uh, elevated from the earth. And she looked down and these little black demons was just trying their best to get her. And every time they looked like they would reach up, she, she'd automatically go up a little bit higher. All through prayer. All through prayer. And, and she said, and I could see them little, them little demons. They're just reaching up trying to pull me down, but they, they couldn't touch her. When do you get to the place the devil can't touch you? When do you get there and say, no, I wish I had that place. Are you willing to pay the price? You can have almost anything you want if you're willing to pay for it. God, God withholds nothing from his people if we're willing to pay for it and go there. Whatever's happening. I remember the Lord saying one day during this process with the guys, he said, this is the final crushing of the rose. I said, well, help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Help the final crushing. Because what's, what's yet in there to come out, I am crushing it and crushing it and crushing it. And that's why you feel that God, please help me. When do all this come to an end? I got a time. But in the meantime, I'm finishing the final round for you. Squeezing out everything that I put in you that you might be better in ministry for people and, and to do my will. I'm doing this for this time. I'm thinking, wow, I thought you'd already crushed me pretty good. <laughs> and say, There's some more to be crushed. Okay. I say, yes, Lord. Finish the job. Because when it's all said and done, don't nothing matter but that I, that I get to heaven. But the promotion... To be promoted from earth to heaven, there's nothing, there's nothing bigger than that. I mean, when it, I said the other day, wouldn't it be terrible for people who've lived in this life very poor, didn't have what they needed, struggled their entire life, and then go to hell? That's horrible. Or to have lived so big in this life and had everything and then die and go to hell. When it's all said and done, they, but one thing important, I got to get to heaven. Oh, that's all that matters. All the rest of this stuff that people don't know. If I just get to heaven when it's over. And he say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's a promotion. That's as high as it goes there, baby. And so you just got to keep pushing. Keep pushing. Now, I'm going to get there by the grace of God. You know, um, there's always people that want somebody to bow to them. Come to me, ask me. You know, you know what you should do because I'm the smart one. And you are dumb as a bag of rocks. Because we don't know anything except what God gives us. We know nothing. We cannot walk this journey without him. 
You know the story about, about Mordecai and Haman. And Haman got promoted, but you know what? He was promoted by a king, but not by God. There's a difference. And he was, he was corrupt. He was evil. And everybody that passed Haman after he got promoted, they were bowing to him, except Mordecai didn't. And he hated him for it. He wanted to kill all the Jews. All of them. All of them. Mordecai is a Jew. The queen is a Jew. Everybody, let's get rid of all the Jews. And it backfired on him. Some people, you see them with power, you think, to take that back. You couldn't dare put Donald Trump in the White House. Are you stupid? Are you kidding me? And and uh, and one of the one of, one of the reporters on CNN said, "I'm just waiting. I'm trying to figure out who's the real Trump." You've seen him already. What he what he's done and said, that's the fool he is. I'm just, if because nobody better not disagree with him and nobody better not get mad with him because he's gonna strike out. You're gonna put him where the power buttons in the White House is. That at a moment of the pushing of a button, this fool is crazy. But somebody over there says something about him he don't like, push that button. Fool, you can't just push a button to push one. They say he doesn't have the temperament. No, he does not. He don't have the temperament. This man's hot-headed. He's stupid. He's dumb. And, and a new book just came out. I was watching a little bit of it on 60 Minutes before I left or... Yeah, I think uh, it was on this morning too. And, and these, two, these two reporters, that they wrote the book about Donald Trump. And I forget the name of it, but it so describes him. And I thought, but one thing I remember them saying, when he wins, it becomes all about Donald. If he loses, it's everybody else's fault. He's the most arrogant man I've ever seen in my whole life. And when one reporter said to him, uh, people talk about how arrogant you are. He said, Hold up. He said, let me ex tell you something. You're not looking, you are never look at any person more humble than me. I thought, you're deceived, buddy. And so he goes back and forth and we're looking for the real Donald Trump. That's who he is. He's unstable. He's crazy. He's a lunatic. I mean, all these things are just unbelievable. But I look at him, I'm thinking, this has been one of the most unbelievable elections that I've ever seen since I've been on the planet. And it's all because we got a lunatic out here. He's crazy. I turned my TV on just to see what other crazy thing he said. <laughs> and then cut it back off. Because I, I, it's amazing. But he wants the promotion. He wants to be president of the United States. Are you kidding me? And then you don't even know how to, how to address black people. You're poor. You haven't got anything. You have no job. Your schools ain't no good. 58% of your youth are unemployed. I thought you thought you appealing to us. We sound like you're slandering us. And all black people ain't poor. And all black people ain't stupid. And all black people are not uneducated. Get a grip. You don't even know what it is. It's coming out. It's coming out in the news real soon for about how he built this complex and told them if any blacks came and wanted to rent, be sure to mark a number nine by black people and do not let them in. But you like us? I don't think so. So if you fall for that, you're as crazy as he is. But he wants the promotion. He wants to be president just to prove that look, I did it. But when he gets it. He done, built the land. he done built the biggest building. He already done done that. So I'm looking for something even bigger. But, but, but for what reason? Is it going to help any of us? No. That would be the greatest and most saddest thing that ever happened to this country. But I don't believe you'll ever get in there anyway. But uh, when I look at that, I'm thinking, I want a promotion. You have church people the same way. I want to, I, I'd like to lead this song. You can't sing. You remember when Steve was here and he, 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 he said to Juana, uh, Miss Juana, I, I'd like to lead this song. And Juana said, baby, and it's opera. We don't go opera. We just don't go opera. And Juana said, baby, we don't sing opera. 
we're not doing it. We sing shouting songs. We're not singing opera. That's for people that slow. We're looking for meaning. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. But he wanted to so bad and just kept pursuing it. Because I want to be seen. I want to be heard. And I want people to say, oh, you have a beautiful voice. Oh, you did so beautiful. You're such a great person. When people start flattering you, get rid of that garbage. Because let me tell you, it'll blow your head up till it explodes and God will not be there. Don't believe it. People say a lot of things about me. I know you don't want me to say it. I thought, go ahead. Because after you finish, I know who's doing this. God is doing this. Help yourself. But no, am, 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 am I looking for it? No, I'm not. not. Not looking for it. Daniel got promoted because they could, they could find nothing. The king, he had favor with the king. He was an interpreter of dreams. And the king promoted him. But the presidents and the other high-ranking people, they... Uh, didn't like Daniel because he got promoted. And that's the way it is with a lot of people. If God exalts you just like he's blessing this girl now, it will be people sitting right in the church like, she's up hollering again. <laughs> well, why don't you get up and holler? Maybe it'll make some difference for you. I thought, how long, baby, let them look funny and think funny, don't even care about it. Because, child, uh, you, you'll see that on your way out the door. Uh, they don't want me to catch them. So they'll do that. I mean, yes. They're not going to come to you and say, Mary, I so much respect what God is doing for you. What's going on? I mean, I mean, what are you doing? Uh-uh. They're not going right ahead, honey. And wait for the day that you sit on the pew and say nothing. Church people is the worst. They're the worst. They're not going to pay the price. But by the same token, I'm going to resent you for doing it. So that's like me going there to buy a dress. And you say, I really like that dress. I saw that dress when I was at the store. I really liked it. So why are you to buy it? Honey, I wasn't paying that. And they get mad with me because I paid it. So how, how much did you like it? It determines whether you're going to pay for it or not. Or whether you're going to go through a bunch of changes. And they lost their mind. No, they haven't. They priced the dress. And if you don't, don't want to buy it, Nobody with a gun is going to make you buy it. It doesn't make sense. But people do that. They want to be in that place. I want Sister Rose to call my name. I'm not calling it. <laughs> Sit in the order and wait for it. They, they, they done done something and, and, and wait to be praised for it. And I feel it. I think I ain't calling the name. Because <laughs> that's what you want. But the person that don't want it, they think, oh, I need to recognize them. But this is, this is, beautiful and you're not the only one many it's amazing but carnal people never want to be with spiritual people if all they can talk about is ice cream and cake you, you can't just be with them because they so carnal they couldn't see off the tip of their nose but you know this should be all across the church it should be breaking out with people are being lifted up and, and changing and God's doing things for them and, and making them new I'm thinking about Regina Thurman. I, uh, whoa. I thought, my God. That's a miracle. And content as a Jersey cow. Just as happy as she want to be. You know, people expect you when you go through something to have a, have a change in your life or whatever for you to come in. I mean, I call and check on how you doing, Regina. I'm doing great. She's fine. You know, Rose, I just, oh, my God. Uh, Miss Rose, Miss Rose, Miss Rose. I got you. Yeah. I mean, what is it with some people who go through a transition like that, they just go through all kinds of bouts of depression and down in the dumps and all this stuff? I was looking at one day to call, and she said, uh, Rose, not one time. I'm doing great. I'm growing up. I'm a woman. <laughs> I see what it feels like to be a real woman. 
Oh, boy, there's no feeling like that because then you come to know yourself and you don't give a kook about who thinks whatever. Think anything you want about me. I'm full grown at this point. So, hey, it don't bother me now because I know who I am. That's what it's all about. Do you know who you are? You're comfortable in that because God has called you to be blessed. I mean, this is, this is phenomenal. And it makes me just tickle pink. I can't turn pink, but it makes me feel that way. So, so you look around the church, you say, look at there. And more and more I'm being able, I'm seeing that. Look at that. Boy, I heard that testimony was so different. Look at people. Olivia was stone crazy for a while in the church. Just a nut. I didn't, I didn't know how bad a nut until I brought her in my house. I thought, wow, you're nuts. But that God changed that nut. He really did. He cracked the thing on it, and you got to the good part of it. See, change. This is what makes it all worthwhile. Boy, this is awesome. And I can say other people in this church, go over to church and say, boy, that's a change. And when they get up, you know they've touched God. You know it. It ain't just words. My friend Eric here, wow. I mean, he, he left the back seat and moved up on the second row. <laughs> That's a huge step. <laughs> and comfortable. And when he can set up in a meeting and say, I got something to say, I thought, like, oh, well. <laughs> Let us hear you. What is it, Eric? That's awesome. And it just says God is doing things for this man. This makes me encouraged. Keep going, keep going. But then you look around and see somebody say, Ain't nothing new. Same old, same old. Same old dry testimony. It's so dead and dry, and it's one if it don't fly away before they ever get through talking. It's just, you think, come on, are you, are you going to have any? Is some, God doing something for you exciting? That's why some people don't stay saved. They're not in a place to have great time. They don't want to just be in the same place all the time. You know, I'm convinced that some marriages fail because of that. Nobody changes. You married him 20 years ago, he still acts the same way. Stupid. <laughs> She's out of line. Stupid. Ain't nobody grow. I mean, I see a growth in my son-in-law here, Amos. <laughs> yeah. Change. When he first got married to Hannah, I mean, with, with water. <laughs> Sorry. Wanda, you think, wow. And I get a call, Mama, you got to tell this crazy fool, such as I, you married him. I don't do nothing less than spiritual. You take care of the rest. And she in the car getting ready to come over to the house because they done had a little argument. And she's in the car and he's running up on the car. Don't leave. <laughs> we can talk this out. Don't leave. Don't go to Mama's. We can fix this, Wana. And she's steady pulling out. Come on over to the house. No, there's no way your mama know how this was in the house. Wana said, are you, in, are, you, are you insane? Mama don't have to be in this house to pick up you. She get you. He had to learn that. See? But great son-in-law. Loves me, loves me, loves me. Call me on the phone. How's my girl doing? Doing good, Amos. I want to check on my girl, see how she's doing. I thought, wow, keep calling me girl. <laughs> Still make me feel young. Yeah. But you watch all these things. As you, you're preaching the gospel. You're, you're counseling people. You're talking to them. These people are being promoted to other levels. They're, they're going from here to here, from here to here. And if they do good here, they're going up here. They'll keep getting better. The good thing about God, as you grow and you develop, he raises you up and you, he starts teaching you new things about him. And then he raises you up again, teach you new things about him. This is great. That's why I've never been bored in 50 years. Because everything about God is new every day. It's exciting. It's no boring stuff going on. No, not by a long shot. Do you want to be promoted? Be willing to pay the price. 
You want to see more of God? You want to hear his voice? I never hear him. That's because your ears are messed up. You can't hear unless you get cleaned out, unless you're at a place you need to be where you can talk to God and he can talk to you. Otherwise, you're too low. You're too low. So think about it. I got to come up. When he spoke to John on the Isle of Patmos, he said, come up hither. Come up higher. So you and I can communicate. When he communicated with Moses, he said, come up to the mountain. He ain't talking down there in the, in, in the valley. Come on up here. So I can talk. Leave all the mother people that you got. God said, yo, folks, leave them down there. See? So, so look at yourself tonight and say, I'd like to be better. I'd like to sing with more anointing. I'd like to be like Brother P. And I told him, I said, how did you get out that bed and make it to church and sing like you wasn't even sick? He couldn't even get up. A Friday night you got here, there he was up here sitting. I looked over at him, I said, well, he said, Mama, that's because of you. You're an example. I'm looking, thinking, wow. Came over to my house, said, baby, I'm so sorry you don't feel good. He was loving the attention, though, but <laughs> so sorry. I want you to feel better. Yeah. But willing to keep going. And, 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 and Lisa said, Mama, he's down in the basement just now, now, this is the same sick man with the cold that can't get out of bed. He's walking around the basement downstairs just singing up a song. That man loves to sing more than eat. He loves singing. And he just singing, sick, still singing. I had this cold again. He said, I could get off your He was still trying to push his song through there. And when, uh, after Regina said, Brother P ain't feeling well, it's like, I don't feel that bad. Growing, solid. You got to get solid so when the storm comes, you're not blown away. You need to be continually being promoted to a higher level, a higher level. Where am I at? I can look back at, at my life, and at that time, I would have been here if this had hit me. Uh, but I look at my life today, I'm not bothered by that situation. That's what one of you told me when I got saved and people started lying on me and stuff, and I was crying all the time. <laughs> they told a lie. She said, baby, the time will come when you will hear that. And it'll never face you again. Boy, was she right. I wouldn't shed a tear over a liar for nothing. Because the Bible said they ain't going to last long. He said, I'm going to wipe them out because I don't like liars. God said, I hate a liar. So if he's lying here, his days are numbered anyway. So you move on. You don't cry about every little thing. Uh, uh, baby Christians cry about everything. And then they don't want to be called a baby. They feel like they've already made it. And they haven't. So... People, God is raising up people in this hour, and he's bringing them closer to him, and they're beginning to experience things, and what they want, they want more. So I'm going to have to bring you up a little bit higher. Here's something else I want you to know. He said, well, I've never had this before. I never felt like this before. It's so exciting. They're not up today and down tomorrow. They keep the victory. And that's why I, I, my kids often say to me, Mama, no matter how you feel, no matter how sick you are, how much pain you got, you're still fine. I said, Mom, just leave me alone. I'm not feeling good. I, everything inside me is messed up. And God done told me the glory in it. <laughs> you don't get an attitude. Shout it out. I mean, I'll go to bed at night glorying in it. Get up in the morning glorying in it. Rose, it's okay. Hey, I'm here. I ain't left you. But I ain't going to do that right now. Well, okay then. It's your business, not mine. See? When, when people were following Jesus, they felt like they wanted to be that great disciple and be close to him and all this. But how is it that when they came after him to, to crucify him, they all left him? All of them. All the, all the, all the, all the disciples left him. By himself. You got to get a person to a point that no matter what happens, that they don't leave in the midst of the storm. You ain't out there trying to build a house and, and it's storming. You build it beforehand. And you got to tell yourself, look, I'm going to make this. I'm not giving up. We got to win. Or I could sit around and tell you about every bad thing happened to me and spend my life whining and crying. And every time you see me, here you go again. I told God, hello, Lord. No, you got to stand tall, and you can't stand tall 
and do what you need to do unless God brings you to a place and you got to be willing to be brought there, but not without the pain, not without the suffering. I, I was saying to Nisi Awana one today, I said, these are growing pains. You, you, you want to grow, you want to get stronger, but then you got not without the pain. So tell the Lord, say, Lord, take me higher. But when you do, be prepared. Somebody may cuss you out tomorrow. Well, they talk to me like a dog on the job. You won't believe what they said to me. When you can go there and get cussed out and say, that's okay, God's in control. You're making progress. Not falling apart. I can't make it. Things didn't go right in my life. I wish that it went a different way. We all sometimes wish that. But if it doesn't, I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to make the best of it. I'm so glad that um, Matt is in, our, is in our house. We, we found out every bad thing about him. <laughs> every bad thing. But he, he's got to be growing. Because... <laughs> I have to say, Matt, did you see that? Oh, I forgot that. Okay. You see that, Matt? I forgot that. But I'm looking for the day I can say, wow, Matt's on the ball. He keeps sliding off the ball. <laughs> but we keep working with it. And sometimes he's just, he's really happy. He takes it with a rain of salt and say, hey. This boy, had to, he had to find out what this side of life looks like. That's right. I told him the other day, I, I, I said, man, ask the Lord to get the ghetto out of you, honey. I mean, you out, but the ghetto's still there. You don't want to be ghetto just because you was ghetto. Uh, Jeanette fixed his hair, made it so nice. He got beautiful hair. And, and Jeanette fixed it so nice. Took a picture of it. Come back here and turn his hair into little turds all over his head. <laughs> and he comes out and said, what's wrong with your hair? I like it like that. I said, ask the Lord to deliver you from being a ghetto bomb. <laughs> Why are them little turds, little tiny little turds all over his head? Come on. Everybody, some people wish they had nice hair. And he going to turn it up everywhere. I thought, no, you didn't. We just seen the picture. You look so nice, man. But he's ghetto. But we're working on it. We somehow going to get him out, get the ghetto out of him. He left the ghetto, but he brought the ghetto with him. I said, see, I was ghetto, so I know what ghetto feels like and what it looks like. Pull your pants up, man. Pants hanging like this, look here. Come on. Why don't you get some suspenders? No, he don't like suspenders. Just hanging like he done pooped in his pants like this. You, you know what? To get change, to get things with God, you got to take off and change a lot of things. God don't save you just for you to be a ghetto. I'm going to get you out of there. I, I talked to a man one time, he said to me in a business, he said he was talking about black people and welfare and all this stuff. And I said, Tom, I said, uh, John, are you talking about me? Girl, oh, get off of it. You ain't never been in the ghetto and, and on the welfare. I said, yes, I was. Food stamps, the whole works. He said, I never would have thought you was, you was there. Thank God for the change. He walked around and said, boy, he's ghetto, ain't he? Oh, she's ghetto. Look at him. Look how they act. They'll carry themselves right. But I want something from God. And you ain't going to be able to fit into certain categories because ghetto don't fit in here. There's no room for it. You got to shake off some stuff. Get rid of it. We're still working on him. I hope he come in one day and don't have no little turds in the top of his head. <laughs> it's out today, ain't it, man? Yeah. Wow. See, that's where it's supposed to look. See? <laughs> He's fun, though. He's fun. He takes everything with a grain of salt, laugh at us, and we laugh at him. Have fun together. But uh, <laughs> if you want God to take you there, be ready to shed some stuff. Get rid of some stuff. All the things that you thought was worth something, get rid of it. Because when he, talk, when he starts pulling you up, it's very tight and narrow. And everything that's not right ain't coming up through there. 
So take it and say, I want to be better. Don't envy many. Don't envy Mary. Don't envy others. No.